but I have developed a methodology um, in in teaching improv class classes at the junior college at Sonoma State privately, et cetera, that I feel is pretty good. Um, and it, it, I'll, t- I'll take you through, it's like a 10-step thing. I'll, I'll take you through that just briefly. The first thing I have people do is begin to play with drum tracks and just make, make sounds and move around, you know, rhythmically. And I might give them a set rhythm that they play along with the drum track. So the, the notes that they play are not as important as the rhythm, you know. So that's mm-hmm. kind of the starting place. So, you know, that's what jazz is. Jazz is African rhythm with European harmony, you know. And then you get the resultant melodies from that. So, so that's the starting place. And I say just two, three minutes of that. And then I move from that into what you might call a modal situation. So pick one scale in one key, and I usually start with major scales with kids, one one key, and you can do a different key every day. There's a host of Abasold tracks, in the Abasold tracks, there's, a, there's an album called Major and Minor, I don't remember what the volume number is, but I just take them through that, and they play in one key for like two or three minutes, and then there's another Abasold that I use called Getting It Together, and that'll run someone through all 12 of the major keys in some kind of um, sequence, like around the circle of fours or fifths or something. Mm-hmm. And then I move from that to like a short progression, let's say five, one, you know? So, so, you know, and, and it, so then I would isolate a short progression five, one in one key and do that for several minutes and then run through five, one in all, all 12 keys. And of course, over time, then that five one becomes two five one, and then it becomes five of two two five one, etc. So that can grow in complexity. Um, and then, you know, so there's like a list of, of tonalities and chord progressions to explore over time. And again, it's a lifelong process. Learning jazz is a lifelong process. Um, and then, then I usually go from that into some kind of specific scale work. We're playing a uh, you know, scale type through all 12 keys, um, maybe on two, five, ones and chords, the accompanying chords. And then I will work on a tune and the, the tune work involves in memorizing the melody. It involves learning uh, jazz appropriate articulations, which is usually the missing component. You know, students mm-hmm. are thrown into a jazz environment with no real listening background. You know, and just like with the trumpet, you know, you have to listen to jazz, listen, listen, listen. You know, yes. Um, so it's it's teaching that that articulation, um, stylistically appropriate articulation through those melodies, memorizing the melody, maybe singing the melody, practicing scales and chords. I trade usually with the the student. We find an Abersold track that uh, that is. Uh, matches up with the tune that they're working on and, and, you know, you play with that for a few minutes and you get into an area of uh, transcription. And I, I think one mistake that I made when I was young was I tried to, to transcribe things that were much too hard for me mm. you know, initially. And it really got me discouraged. I think start with things that are printed. You can buy a host of transcriptions and get the recording and use this program, uh, one I use on my phone now, is called the Amazing Slowdowner. Mm-hmm. Use that program to slow stuff down to a tempo that's manageable. Listen closely to the articulation, the inflection, and work with that transcription for a couple of minutes. And then uh, the last thing, you, you know, when I learned jazz, it was the first thing on the list, but I put it last, is to, to play patterns, you know, within, um, let's say, the major scale to play uh, uh sequential patterns or leap patterns that have leaps or diatonic chords or something like that. That's sort of the last, the last thing on my list, but that's my 10 step program. And I, I run my classes through that. I run my private students through that as a portion of what they're doing with me. If they're interested in jazz, I don't make them do that if they're not, but I think it is valuable.